guys, I don't know, hindi pa namin na, uh, hindi ko pa, like, um, paano ba to? Nabigyan ng title yung series na gagawin natin. And hopefully, uh, it will run smoothly. Say hi sa camera. Hindi ka na nakikita sa camera, pero naka-screen record ka, Jomer. So, yeah. <laughs> so, guys, yung first natin na uh, guest is si Jomer. Jomer! <laughs> oh, pakilala ka, Jom. <laughs> So, I'm, hello, I'm Jomer Malonosta, and you can call me Jom. I'm a second-year political science student from the University of the Philippines, Visayas. And, ano yung i-discuss natin sa episode na to? Um, so, today, guys, my good friend Gab asked me to share my expertise, well, expertise, joke lang, to share my um, thoughts on Um, socialism because well, why not? Let's talk about politics, right? So, I, I, I'm not an expert in political ideologies. I still haven't really studied political ideology, but I have the fundamentals so I guess maybe I can share some of the things that I know about it. The first question is, what is communism and like, saan to nagsimula or like, sino yung nagpasimuno neto? So, I mean, yeah, God, like, um, we're gonna talk about what what socialism is because there's a lot of misconceptions with the term. Usually, it's used interchangeably with communism, with Marxism. We hear a lot of isms, a lot of <laughs> political movements that's yeah, yeah. associated with socialism. So, in political science, socialism is actually an umbrella term for the any ideology belonging to the political left that advocates for social equality. So one core feature of any socialist movement or any socialist political theory is the goal of equality. So usually yung mga um, theories or movements and philosophies na socialist in nature usually advocate for equality. So how do, you, how do they achieve this equality in the first place? So usually um, it assumes that we are in a capitalistic society. So in a capitalist society, there are two dominant class. So, nung time ng industrialization, ano ba yung industrialization gap? Kung, ano, kasi ma- usually naririnig natin yung mga industrialization. Um, okay. I hear that thing a couple of times na, tapos like, naalala ko pa siya na topic namin yan way back in my junior high school days, but um, medyo rusty na ako dyan. I, I need a refresher and I know na uh, mas maintindihan ko ulit ito kapag it-explain mo. So, Joe Mer, can you explain to me? Can you explain to us rather what industrialization is? <laughs> so, usually, pag when we get the word industrialization, we think of big factories, we think of big machines. Yeah. Um, but industrialization basically is um, just a shift in the mode of production. Mm-hmm. So before before industrialization gap, we were um, a feudal society. And so in a feudal society, social class is determined by the ownership of land. Mm-hmm. So um, if you own land, you're considered as a landlord. And if you work for that landlord in yes, that, using that land, you are a peasant. So we have two classes back then sa feudal, sa feudal stage of society. We have the landlord and the peasant. The landlord has the capital of land. He provides protection. He provides um, he provides space for the peasants to work. So the mga peasants, sila yung nagtatanim doon and in exchange, they get shelter from the landlord. So after that, kasi, um, nagkaroon ng shift sa mode of production, hindi na land yung capital. You don't need land na. You need Um, you need machinery, you need machines. So, yan yung shift to industrialization. So, in the industrial age, dito na, um, dito na nagkaroon ng socialist ideas, pero hindi pa siya masyadong na po. So, kasi sa industrial age, there were a shift, there, there is a shift sa social classes na. So, dahil meron ng bagong social class, from landlords and peasants, to we have the capitalists, and we have the proletariat or the working class. So, yung capitalists, Um, they own the means of production, they own the machinery, they own the factories. While ang working class naman, they input the labor into these machines in order to produce products that the capitalists can sell. So the basic assumption kasi ng socialism is that 
hindi equal yung hindi equal yung distribution of wealth between the capitalists and the proletariat so merong class conflict this cat class conflict is, means that irreconcilable ang differences nila and that one class gains over the other by exploiting them so yung ano kasi yung assumption niyan is that the capitalists exploit um the working class through their labor surplus yung so yung labor surplus na yun, yun yung ano yung trabaho nila na ini-input sa mga machines ganyan na hindi it's not equally equal na tatanggap nila na wages so yun yung basic assumption ng mga socialist doctrines so dahil doon sa exploitation ng workers dahil sa um, working conditions nila unti-unti na buo yung ano yung social yung socialism usually sa writing ni Karl Marx and ni Friedrich Engels na of the communist manifesto so ganun so like yung na-mention mo na hindi na ba yung book na yan um na sana ah, na lang na pinabasa yan ng teacher namin nung senior high kami pero like it's the bible of the land oh my gosh <laughs> so hindi na natin yan i-dig deeper na so like maybe sa ibang episode na lang if um, okay, pagbibigyan mo ako ng like, guest ka ulit okay. sa series na to sa series na hindi pa natin na magbibigyan ng pangalan so like John you mentioned Karl Marx and sino nga yung isang guy? mm-hmm Frederick Engels. Yeah, Frederick Engels. Engels. So like, silang dalawa yung yung ano like ah, uh, parang bata sabihin. Silang dalawa yung nagpasimuno sa movement na to. Kasi mm-hmm. sa akin natin yun. Uh, Taka saan sila? I mean, anong yung nationality nila? Um, Karl Marx is German and Frederick Engels I forgot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Pero ayon. Um, yung socialist ay meron um before. If, ay, during the realization, medyo ano na, nabubuo na yung idea nila ng what are the flaws of the capitalist system. So, pero it was mostly articulated talaga in the words of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, ang, ano, ang communist manifesto. So, yun yung naging basihan ng ano, yung basihan ng socialism and other forms of related derivatives ng socialism. So, sa communist no, manifesto kasi, ang sabi ni Karl Marx is that all history is um, the history of class struggle. So, ayun nga, sabi ko, di ba, parang um, um, yung transition, transitional stage ang capitalism kasi according to it, to Engels and Karl Marx, they predict na um, the capitalist system will eventually collapse because of its contradictions. Yeah. And then, ayun nga, it will inevitably lead to socialism and then, ayun nga, theoretically, na um, sabi ni Karl Marx, it will lead to a communist state. So, a communist state is a classless society, a classless state. Actually, hindi na siya state kasi walang government. People just um, produce goods out of social need and uh, like it's very utopian in nature. Sa social, yung socialism kasi it's a precursor to communism kasi usually di ba like interchangeable nating nagagamit na yung communism and socialism Marxist. is actual. Sometimes we call it China. Diba? Usually China yeah, 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 yeah. natin communist state when it, in fact it's a socialist. socialist capitalist agency. Ah. Oh, it's it's actually a weird combination of wait, wait, wait. Is it two. possible? Tapos, um, is it possible, possible for a... Okay, okay. <laughs> John, yung time kasi ni, ni Mao during the um, time of Mao, yun yung time na ano na implement niya yung Marxist Leninist Maoist na ano na socialism sa China mm-hmm. that time uh, we can call China as a socialist state kasi yung means of production talaga nila yung is collectivized by the state and distributed pero nung time na later on kasi after Mao's term um medyo nagkaroon ng revisionism sa ano nila sa political system. So, sinabi ko nga parang socialist capitalist siya which is very contradictory. John, can I ask a question? I mean, like, di ba sabi mo si Karl Marx or sure, why not? Um, sino yung isang guy ulit? Sorry to like, <laughs> Marx and Bingo? So? Big Rick Engels. 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 So, oh, Engels. Are they, like, um, belongs to a working class or a or sila yung nabibilong sa mayayaman or what. I mean, like, they're the one who came up with that idea. So, like, I'm just curious. I mean, like, nag-aalsa sila kasi, eh, tama ba yung term na nag-aalsa? 
or like may isinusulong sa bagong oh, may ins- may or they quit oh they quit the capitalist system so like I mean nag-aalsa sila kasi Martin. hindi sila ano kasi kasi hindi uh-huh. sila yung mayaman uh-huh. or nag-aalsa sila kasi hindi nila ginu nagugustuhan uh-huh. yung ginagawa ng mga mayayaman parang ganoon <laughs> actually it would surprise you to know that Marx and Engels actually belong to middle class mm-hmm. background. Actually, they're intellectuals na who belong to a very middle class background. Kasi, mm-hmm. um, we really need the resources to actually ponder sa, like, like, make, the, uh, like, philosophize uh, the contradictions of capitalism. Kaya, mm-hmm. they're, they're not working class men. So, naano lang nila na, na ayun, na realize nila na, oh my God, these are the contradictions of the capitalist system. We must critique it. You know? Kasi we would expect, di ba, syempre, siguro ang mga workers, tal- syempre ang mga workers talaga yung nakakaalam ng exploitation nilang naranasan. Mm-hmm. Pero ayun, na usually, they don't have access to the, they don't have, they don't have the privilege to philosophize kasi it's, it's really a privilege to like spend your time thinking about capitalism and you have to work and provide for your family, di ba? Mm-hmm. Well, Karl Marx and Engels who belong to the middle class have all the time in the world to think about capitalism and those abstract ideas. So, aside aside from these two, I mean like, um, let's say for instance, um, sa panahon ngayon, may, may mga, ano ba ito, paano ba ito sabihin? Mm-hmm. May mga like, um, well no or like yeah, yeah celebrities or whatsoever kahit na hindi celebrities kahit na um, politicians na nagpre-preach or nagpa-practice ng, ng socialism so of course like as I've said kanina we have Karl Marx and we have Friedrich Engels mm-hmm. as the ano the like foundation who made um who built the foundations of socialism Marxism ganyan so after that um no noteworthy lang talaga na ano, Lenin, Vladimir Lenin of USSR, Russia. Right now, Russia. Kasi um, Lenin was the first ever, first political figure to actually put in practice the writings of Karl Marx. Mm-hmm. So, ayun, he established USSR, he reached a revolution against the chars of Russia, of traditional Russia, and then established USSR. So, ayun, Lenin was the first ever to actually um, translate Karl Marx's writing into an actual polit- working political system, which is the USSR. So, ayun, he's one of the most prominent figures in socialism. We have Vladimir Lenin, we have Stalin, which was, who was very famous for his authoritarian rule in, in USSR. Okay. And then we have Mao Zedong in China, who waged a revolution against uh, um who made a revolution against the traditional um, traditional ways of life in China. And then we have supposedly North Korea is communist as they claim, but they're actually not. They're just playing fascism. It's not communism because workers do not do not control the state. We have Cuba, another example of a social of a socialist state. So um Curious lang ako, baka curious sa uh, new viewers natin as if parami ba na Lord sana marami na. <laughs> so like, um, can you tell us, um, I mean, how it works? So as I've said earlier, socialism has a lot of derivatives and related political movements, political theory, political philosophy, and the like. So, um, you ask me how it works. So, it usually is categorized into two types of socialism. First is we have the revolutionary socialism and then we have the revisionist socialism. Mm-hmm. So, as the word implies, revolutionary socialism, it, it, this type of socialism is the um, type of socialism that aims to overthrow the state by waging revolution through violent means. So, yung mga revolutionary, revolutionary socialism, usually yung examples nito is Marxist Leninism, as I've said earlier, is Lenin, he waged a uh, revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution in USSR. Mm-hmm. Um, they overthrowed the Chars, they actually decapitated them, they killed all the Russian monarchy and replaced them with um, the Vanguard Party of USSR. And ayun nga, Lenin became um, the leader of the new US 
of the new state, which is socialist state, which is the USSR. So you, it's an example of a revolutionary socialism. So ayun nga, we can identify these type of doctrines because um, they they believe in the primacy of armed struggle. They believe that um, the only way to seize power from the state and to um, put forward their um, aims is to seize it violently. Um, ayun. One example of um, revolutionary socialist because the Philippine context is we have the Communist Party of the Philippines, the CPP and the CPP and PA, the Communist Party of the Philippines and the National People's Army. So, yeah, they're an example of um, revolutionary socialist. So, yung the other one naman, Gab, is we have the revisionist uh, socialist. So, as it implies, yung revisionist, is, it means that they changed it. So, so they, don't, um, they don't believe in the primacy of armed struggle. They believe in the gradual and democratic process of forwarding socialist ideals and goals. So um, they believe in um, the that through the electoral system for elections, the legal means that they can forward their ideals gradually. So yeah. one example of um, revisionist na socialism is in UK, um, in Norway, in Denmark, in which um medyo ano siya, medyo mixed siya na ano mixed mixed socialist mixed capitalist economic system na yung sistema nila. So, yung usually yung dalawang, dalawang kind of, ano, dalawang kind of socialist. So, how does it work ba? Yung, yung so, wait is, lang, John, wait how, lang. So, how does it work? So, like, yung sabi mo na dalawang, ano, ng uh, socialist. So, uh-huh. like, um, in simpler or like, sa, or maybe sa akin lang. So, like, masasabi natin na yung isa parang makarisal tapos yung isa parang makabonifasyo. Tama ba? Somehow, kasi di ba Rizal, he believed in um, peaceful means of achieving national liberation while Andres Benetasio, he um, he stood for revolutionary means mm-hmm. sa pagamit ng dahas para makuha natin ang palayaan ng bansa. So, ayun, it's it's a nice analogy, Gab. That's a nice analogy. <laughs> so, so, parang, for example, Rizal located for Haiti, ganyan lang. Mm-hmm. And, Si, ano, si Bonifacio really took up arms against the Spanish regime. No? It's a nice example. So sorry for interrupting you. So, saan na nga yun? May na-explain ka sa akin kanina. Ano <laughs> sorry, Joe. Pero thank you. Thank you. Yes. May natutulan ako sa'yo. Pag-ibig na talino na ito. I mean, like, Jomer, so, alam naman natin na, ano, na ang Pilipinas hindi siya socialist na country, di ba? And, um, can you, like, you know, differentiate, tama ba, ang, ang word, like, ang um, socialist sa kasalukuyang, ano, sa kasalukuyang sistema ng Pilipinas? Yan. <laughs> so, uh, so, to have a clear distinction between mm-hmm. yeah, um, socialist and socialist, evaluate natin siya in terms of mm-hmm. political and economic differences. So, for example, a socialist state, for example, like Cuba, is um, politically, it only has one party. So, there are no other parties that run in elections. They have just one ruling party. Yan yung communist party ng Cuba, for example. Here in the Philippines, politically, we don't have a single ruling party. We have a multi-party system where a lot of um, parties are able to compete democratically for elections. Mm-hmm. And and yan yung difference usually ng isang socialist state at and, and, uh, and a liberal democratic state like the Philippines. So, you only have one ruling party in a socialist state, while in a liberal democratic party, a uh, liberal democratic state, you usually have more than two part aspect ng isang socialist state. And next naman is yung economic. So, in, in, in an economic, sa economic um, aspect naman ng isang socialist state, yung means of production are collectivized. Ibig sabihin, walang private property. There is no private property in a socialist state. Mm-hmm. So, sa Cuba Gab, wala sila, walang private property doon. Walang restaurants na, 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 na privately owned. Walang, um, all, the, all the social services are free also. So, lahat yun ay public, um, owned by the state and the people. 
Um, lahat yung pagpapatakbo ng mga industries nila are, um, are fueled by the taxes of the people. Pero recently, yung Cuba, medyo um, in-adjust nila yung economy nila. They give um, private uh, they give private licenses na to people to boost their economy. About 20% yata. Eh, merong private drivers, meron ng private restaurants na ano na nag-operate in Cuba. Pero ayun, in the Philippines naman, economically, um, we have private uh, we have private industries hindi siya nationalized or collectivized so for example yung private industries natin is um, we have PAL dati kasi yung PAL it's publicly owned yung tiny Marcos pero ngayon it's privatized na and for example yung ano natin yung electric cooperatives natin like Meralco and alike are privately owned instead of public owned so ay ay yung differences nila politically and econ- economically John, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, last na to kasi like medyo mahaba na talaga yung usapan natin. Dapat may sad neglect dito or whatsoever, no? Para mahaba-haba ang pintuhan. You have to laugh. It's a joke, man. <laughs> so like, I mean, can I ask what are the pros and the cons of like, um, you know, a country being a, so- a socialist country, parang ganun. Kasi like everything, meron naman talaga ang pros and cons, diba? So, so, sa socialism, ano yung pros and cons niya? So, um, in a socialist country, one, yung sa pros and cons niya, one advantage of a socialist country is that um, usually mataas yung, there's a high level na quality of life nila because wala nang, usually small lang yung gap ng inequality in socialist countries because um, social services are free in socialist countries like healthcare, education, livelihood. Lahat ng social services are free. You don't have to pay for it. Like, yeah. Compare natin sa Philippines na yung healthcare natin, or we have a lot of private hospitals, our healthcare, our healthcare system na public are you, is usually ano, hindi siya masyadong maganda yung service niya. So, sa socialist countries, yung access, yung access nila to these social services are for free because it's funded by the taxes of the people. So, yun yung isang advantage niya. Relative equality for everyone. Pero yung consequence niya is that usually medyo inefficient yung, ano, yung production at yung economy under a socialist country. Kasi nga, um, mal- maliit lang yung, ano, yung, yung wage difference ng uh, jobs. For example, yung a doctor and a driver all, almost earns the same in a socialist party, like for example in Cuba. Pero, um, inefficient siya kasi usually very mataas yung taxes niya and people are demotivated to work harder because yung, ano nga, hindi sila incentivized na they can accumulate more wealth kasi in a socialist party, ano, bawal ang, ano yun, bawal ang hoarding of wealth well, walang millionaires, walang billionaires in the socialist country. Kaya yung very inefficient siya. Pero, ayun na, on the, on the other side of it, relative ang equality for everyone, walang nagigilap halos kasi they have access to social services, they can go to school without a worry about the vision, they can go to the hospital without worrying about paying about their bills. Ayun. Yun yung pros ng, ano, ng socialist thing. And also, one thing to add is, Ano nga, dahil nga, di ba, they, um, the state provides for, almost provides for everyone, so the bureaucracy is really, really big. So you have a really big government in a socialist state. So having a big government means really prone to corruption because you have a mm-hmm. very big bureaucracy. So what happened nga in USSR during the reign of Stalin is that, ayun, yung government nila was very corrupted and very authoritarian kasi napakalaki ng ang bureaucracy nila and Stalin was hindi adamant and hindi in power so he was prone to corrupt yun yung downside ng isang that it's prone to corruption to end abuse of power thank you so much Jom sa pag-enlighten sa akin I mean marami akong natutunan sa <laughs> Sa, sa podcast <laughs> sa sa like you know sa video call natin ngayon and hopefully yung mga viewers natin kasi alam ko maraming manonood nito kasi share mo to diba famous ka girl eh so maraming makakaview na to and yun nga sana sa uh, marami rin silang natutunan I mean hindi lang ako yung na-enlighten mo ganun hey John thank you so much for having us um, tonight 
tonight guys kasi it's 1am na pala. <laughs> so again, Jom, thank you so much for having us and sana um, maging guest pa kita sa upcoming episodes ng series na to. And by the way, kung may gusto kang kasalamatan, gusto kang i-plug or like um, gusto kang i-promote like, you know, nagigig ka ba, nagbabanda ka ba, like, follow me guys on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Jom, go ahead. <laughs> So first of all guys, I'm really really humbled to be the first guest of Dan's talk show series and I hope to get more episodes. So ayun guys, um, I would just like to plug na please join National Democratic Mass Organizations or NDMOs to learn more about the social issues of our countries. We have Ligo Filipino Students, we have Anak Bayan, we have Kapataan Party List, we have Gabriela and many more. So if you want to learn about the current political crisis that we are in and just learn more about Philippine society, please join NDMOs. So, ayun guys, join NDMOs and I am very, very thankful God, for inviting me. Uh, thank you then po, Jomer, sa pagpapaunlock sa akin. Alam pong busy busy yung beauty natin ngayon, bro. Thank you pa rin. And yun nga, sana mag-guest pa sa next episode.